Hey everyone, this is Mr. Hudson, and today I want to talk about grouping and the AP World History DBQ. Um, grouping is something that used to be a specific point on the AP rubric uh, prior to 2017, and then grouping as a point, a specific point on the rubric, went away. But I want to talk about grouping today because it's still incredibly important to your essay. Um, instead of being one point, now grouping is going to help you um, get multiple points in the essay. And if this is 2020, uh, or you're a time traveler from the future studying the AP exam in 2020, um, that ability to group the documents uh, could help you get up to eight points on the AP exam this year. And the reason is because grouping documents together gives you a stronger argument. Um, it's never good to go into an argument with only one piece of evidence or, or one piece of logic to support your argument, right? So you want to go in with, armed with multiple lines of reasonings with multiple pieces of evidence to back those up. And that's where grouping comes into play because uh, when you can put multiple documents together into multiple lines of reasoning, aka grouping, it gives you stronger arguments and that's going to help you earn up to uh, two points for the um, uh, supporting an argument with evidence from the documents. That's going to help you if you try to add evidence beyond the documents uh, because you've got a strong argument to make. Uh, it's going to help you with sourcing because you have to link your analysis of audience, purpose, point of view to your argument which is built off of your groups. Um, and it can help you with the complexity point as well. Uh, if you can, you know, do groups that uh, show both continuity and change or discusses m multiple causes and multiple effects, right? So good grouping can go a long way on the essay, which is why I want to talk about that today. All right, so you're probably going to look at what you see on the screen right now and wonder, wait a second, why are we using Funko Pops? And why are they Star Wars? And why do they all seem to be women from Star Wars? Well, a simple answer to that is that I, as of the time of this video, have an 11th month old daughter who I have decided is going to be a Star Wars fan someday. And so I started collecting these um, uh, during the pregnancy uh, so that when I introduced Star Wars, I could show her relatable uh, people from Star Wars. And it just happens that there are a lot more characters in the sequel trilogies that are uh, women characters than in the main trilogy or the prequels, so most of these are going to be uh, from the sequels and then also that uh, series on Disney Plus with the small uh, cute green creature that everybody loves. So first things first, when you look at the documents, they're typically going to be in chronological order, so that's kind of what we see here. Sometimes chronological order may actually be what you want to use. Let's say that the prompt seems to be taking you down a continuity or a change route, then cool. Just uh, figure out where the beginning and the middle is, where the change uh, occurs, or how you're going to prove a continuity, and go with it. However, uh, what do you do if it's causation? What do, you, what do you do if you're looking for similarities or differences? Then you've got to start looking into the documents to see what patterns uh, there are or connections there are between documents. So for example, when I look at these Funko Pops, maybe the first thing I notice is the top of their heads. Uh, and so there's this group that have stuff connected to the top of their heads, uh, they're wearing something, and then there's the, the braids group, and there's like a ponytail group. Now, how am I gonna make meaning out of this if this is my grouping? I don't know, you know, it's, it's not a strong uh, analytical grouping, right? If the prompt is uh, what to uh, evaluate to what extent the female characters of Star Wars have impacted fashion, uh, okay, cool, we could talk about hair. But chances are that's not going to be the prompt on the exam. Uh, if there is going to be a prompt about the women of Star Wars, it's probably going to be more something along the lines of um, evaluate to what extent the female characters of Star Wars uh, contributed to the, uh, the war in the stars. So it's going to be a more causation-based essay than it would be simply, um, I don't know, maybe hair thing, maybe this is, a, maybe this is similarities and differences, I don't know, but um, that's not a strong historical causation thing, because fashion is not usually something we talk about in history, right? So let's look at what we might do if it is, uh, how did these female characters uh, affect the Star Wars?
So in that case, I need to start thinking about what impact did these women have in the story. And in that case, I start to see that there's a group who are warriors, uh, fighters. Uh, there's also a group who are more leaders, not um, fighters necessarily, but they were uh, generals or admirals. And then finally, there was a group that you know were just supporters. They did what they could with the job that they had, and when they were asked to step up, they did. And then Rise of Skywalker happened, and we don't talk about that. Okay, so what does this look like on an actual uh, DBQ? So let's look at the 2019 released DBQ real quick. And this is the uh, Portugal in the Indian Ocean uh, DBQ. And this is a DBQ that Heiler talks about in his overview of the changes to the 2020 DBQ, which means that technically my videos exist in the same multiverse as Heimler's videos. So you know they're legit. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you've taken the time to look at the 2019 released uh, documents by now. And if you haven't, pause the video, go get on the College Board website, look over the documents, and be passingly familiar with them. All right, so assuming you have looked at them, let's, let's talk about two ways we might group these documents. Uh, bearing in mind that there are seven documents, and so we're going to go ahead and group them two ways and not look for third groups uh, because with five documents it's less likely that you'll wind up with three uh, groupings of the documents. Okay, so if we're looking uh, from a surface point of view, uh, the first thing I might go with is who's doing the talking. And in that case, uh, documents two, three, and seven were all written from a Portuguese point of view and, and, and so I might throw those together real quick. Uh, secondly, uh, you've got documents 1, 4, and 5, which are taken from a Muslim point of view, so I might group those. And then document 6, it's from an, a, a Venetian point of view, so not really sure what to do with that one, but hey, I can always not use one of the documents as long as I'm perfect on all the other ones. So um, if I can't figure it out, uh, I can throw it away, or I can group it maybe with the Muslims and do Portuguese versus others, since Portuguese are the main subject of the... Uh, the prompt. Now, again, this is surface. It's very quick, and I'm not sure there's a, a through line to my groups that's going to help me make an argument uh, because that argument winds up kind of sounding like he said, she said. Well, according to the Portuguese, this is how much they transform trade, and according to the Muslims, this is how much they transform trade. So if I look more closely at the documents, I start finding that there are documents that say uh, that, uh, that say that the Portuguese did make an impact and became either valuable or important trading partners uh, and either pushed out the, the people who were there before or simply became a, a value source. And those are documents two, five, and seven. The other thing I see when I'm uh, when I look at these documents is evidence that the Portuguese had a limited impact, or that the Indian Ocean Basin trade was ready for the Portuguese, and they took steps to do something about it. Uh, and particularly, those are documents one, three, and four. And then six, which goes with this group, makes it clear, at least to the Venetians, that. You know, the Portuguese, they're nothing. Uh, they're selling low quality peppers. Uh, and there's there's an opportunity here if if we wanted to move in. And so as far as that goes with the prompt, I think six becomes a key document to say that the Portuguese impact wasn't necessarily as strong as it could have been. And so that gives me two nice groups where I can argue both sides of uh, the prompt, which could lead me down that complexity road because uh, I'm saying, yeah, they definitely had an impact, but they didn't completely transform trade in the Indian Ocean Basin. And so you see just by having those two groups, how quickly something uh, very thesis statement like uh, jumps out at you. All right, so that is grouping for the DBQ. Now, um, there are a lot of different ways to group and, and reading the prompt carefully is gonna be one of the most important things to get you going uh, to group well. Um, being able to determine what historical thinking skill you're looking for in the documents um, is gonna help you when you form those things. And there's a, a pretty serious conversation we need to have about spice tea and grouping because uh, that might be one of your first impulses is to use those themes when you group your documents. and. You'll notice I've kind of avoided talking about that at all in this video. 
And the reason is, is that um, they're kind of overly simplistic sometimes. And even worse, sometimes the, the prompt, it just asks you for economic change. And so if it's just economic change, then spicy doesn't get you anywhere, okay? Now, it can be a good starting point. Once you have a historical thinking skill in mind, you might look for examples of um, political effects, social effects, and whatever. But while that may get you a starting point, you may find that there are different sets of political effects. This isn't as likely in a five document DBQ in 2020 as it might have been on the seven um, document DBQ, but still you don't want your thesis statement to read um, there were political and social effects of uh, the Portuguese arrival in the Indian Ocean Basin. It's too broad. You need to identify what that political thing is, right? So, you know, there are political leaders um, who were dictators or something, right? Or uh, the, there were economic impacts like um, a decrease in income, you know? So giving it that little tag will go a long way. If you need to start with spice tea, use it um, depending on the prompt, right? But if you start with the prompt, start with historical thinking skills and look for the sort of shared characteristics that they have, whether that's, whether that's hair or whether that's um, weapons or whatever, that'll get you there, okay? So um, the best thing to do is, of course, just to practice. Uh, you can use any old released uh, DBQ for this, um, certainly. Uh, and just try floating them around in different ways, you know, um, and, and see what you come up with. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If there's a better way you know to group things, please, uh, please share. Um, and then do all that YouTube stuff because